Hey, how's it going? We're going to do a little comparison test tonight, and the reason behind the comparison test is I scoured the internet looking for a good comparison on a full frame Nikon versus a DX format Nikon or APC sensor, and there's a wealth of information on there, but not no real good head to head time lapse comparison of low light for, say, tracking the Milky Way or something at night, so I'm going to make myself a video now that I end up having two cameras, but it's going to take a lot of effort to do it. I want to make sure everything's uh, pretty much, uh, the playing field is level between the two cameras. Now this is specifically for the nighttime lapse, not to do with picture quality during the daylight or uh, things like that. Now first up, we're going to be using the D5100. I've had this camera for basically since it was brand new. I've got over 100,000 actuations on it. Next up is a D600. They just picked this up not too long ago because it just really started bothering me if I could possibly do, uh, you know, get better time lapses at night. And like I said, I've been studying and studying. Whether it's that much better to justify spending, I think used, you're still going to be looking at around $1,000 for this camera. Now as far as lenses, I know you're supposed to tip your camera down when you take your lenses off. D600, I'm going to be using a 50mm 1.8D, real fast lens, uh, it's an older lens. D5100 is going to be using a 35mm uh, Nightcore DX 1.8G. Now I've had this lens basically since I've had the camera and I really like it. Uh, lets a lot of light in, does an incredible job. DX cameras got a 1.5 crop factor which puts this 35 to 50 and it should give pretty awful close uh, comparison to the 50 millimeter on a D600. So. When I go to start shooting the time lapse, I'm going to shoot in RAW, run full manual on both cameras, and have all that, the ISO, shutter speed, everything set up identical for the time lapse itself. There's going to be pretty much a full moon behind me, so you'll be able to tell if you got, you know, like say graininess or not when I, when I, if I turn the ISO up. And when we're done with that, we're going to shoot some uh, JPEGs of a uh, farmhouse quite a ways off in lower light, just moonlight, and you should be able to tell by there just what the outcome is on each camera. We're going to go ahead and get started and set these guys up and try to buzz through this video and let's go ahead and get rolling. <laughs> There you go. The time lapse uh, test is done, and I could have probably put more videos and pictures on, but you got a good idea on just what the full frame does against the uh, uh, APC sensor. It does pull in more light, uh, less ISO noise, and a uh, sharper image when you start turning that f stop up. Capabilities are, to me, a much better 
for the full frame and I'm happy that I uh, do have a full frame for that purpose now and like I said this is only for that low light say higher ISO time lapse test lenses were pretty pretty much on par with each other before I do go eventually I'm going to be putting some videos on on different lenses and I got an 8 millimeter hooked up to a uh, two power teleconverter here and it'll blow you away for what it does out on the night sky don't want to talk too much about it but you'll see what I'm talking about and then I'll be putting a video on on this uh, Sigma 24-70 f2.8 DG HSM this is an incredible piece of glass for time lapse at night so go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already more is to come I'm always tinkering with a lot of crap, so there you go.